Well, we'll just have to start it here. So, this is what we're learning about. And here's what we have now. You missed a great story. You missed a great story out there. Anyway, uh, this is called a periodic function. What did you notice was peculiar about it? It's a repeating pattern. Okay, let's write that. This is called a periodic function because it has a repeating pattern. Okay, specifically in the y value, 0, 1, 0, negative 1. 0, 1, 0, negative 1. It would just keep going and going, right, Brady? Yes, it would. It'd be going even better if that. Uh, go, 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 there you go. <laughs> so let's draw a blank graph. Do it anyway. Draw and make it a little bit longer in the x direction. Kind of. This would now be the theta axis, not the x axis. And the y axis. Okay. You guys have all graphed by using a table of values. That's all this is, is a table of values. The first point is 0, comma 0. That's right here. Okay. We're going to be graphing these points to take a look at what the graph looks like. Okay. Now, shh, 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 shh. how high up and low down on the y-axis are we going? The highest value is 1, the lowest value is negative 1. Okay. And then we have a couple of things to plot here on the x-axis. We have pi halves, pi, pi halves, 2 pi. Yeah, because they're all, the gap between them is pi halves of a unit because we went a quarter of a circle, then a quarter of a circle, then a quarter of a circle. So then it goes 5 pi halves, 3 pi, 7 pi halves, 7 and 4 <laughs> pi. Yeah, there's a little gap in the... Window sill. Your swimmer's hair shot by this man, Billy Hair Kid. His hair right now. That's pretty cool, huh? Recognize <laughs> Okay. Shh, 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 shh. So. Now, you guys, uh, just so we're clear on this. Hey. I already had these written in your column. You didn't have to come up with these. Why do you think I chose these specific values? They're on the unicircle. First of all, they're on the unicircle. That's true. And uh, weren't they occurring at regular intervals? Pi halves was a quarter of a circle. And then pi was another quarter of a circle. Three pi halves was a quarter of a circle. The other reason is I knew they were going to give us these nice numbers, 0, 1, 0, negative 1. But the, the x's are occurring in a regular pattern. You're just increasing by a quarter of a circle. So anyway, 0, comma 0. Where's the next point to plot? Pi halves, comma. Okay. So you guys don't need to watch me plot points. That's the seventh grade thing. You do it. You've all passed seventh grade. Plot these points. There's no complaining in point plotting. Yeah. Come on. Every single point in the table, I want you to plot it on the graph. This should take you like all of 30 seconds, you guys. This is not a difficult task. Let's see. Uh, I need Megan to come on up. Megan, right? Maddie! <laughs> Some M name. Sorry, Maddie. Can you plot the points for us? 
No paper? Ooh, brave. Oh, well, that's pretty easy. All right. <laughs> Pi comma zero. No, it's got. Just erase it. Press a little button. Press a little button on the pen and erase it. Hold it down and press. Hold the button and then push it on there, and it erases. Now you have space. Stealing her ideas. <laughs> okay, sh 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 couple things we gotta talk about. Yeah. Okay. And for some reason, yesterday this question just stumped my students, and I don't, I didn't understand why. It wasn't a very difficult question, so maybe you guys are a little bit smarter than they are. Um, why did we call this periodic? That wasn't the something question because it has. A repeating pattern, not only in the table, but also in the graph. Do you guys recognize a repeating pattern in the graph? Yes. So if I start at zero and go up to one, down to negative one, and end at zero, that's what we call one cycle. It's a constant R of C, right? What's that? Constant R of C, right? Constant rate change. Uh, that would be a linear function. If I started here again and went up to one, down to negative one, and entered at zero, that's another cycle. You guys seeing this? So my question to them was, all right, listening. What's the horizontal distance that it takes for this graph to complete one cycle? I guess you guys are smarter. Take that, hey, Dave. Uh, l let me ask it again, though. What's the horizontal distance needed for this graph to complete one cycle? This cycle started at 0 and it ended at? This cycle started at 2 pi and it ended at? 4 pi. If I did another cycle, it would start at 4 pi and end at? 6 pi. Okay? So the distance from here to here is 2 pi, right? The distance from here to here horizontally is 2 pi. This is what's known as the period of this periodic function. Okay? The period, let's define this here. Horizontal distance to complete to complete a cycle. It's the horizontal distance needed to complete a cycle. Every periodic function has a period because it has a repeating pattern on a regular interval, and so we just got to find the length of that interval. Yeah? We good so far? Okay. There's also another measurement we have to take here. So I want you to identify this on your graph. The distance between the highest and the lowest point. Okay. So the highest point is 1, the lowest point is negative 1. What's the distance between that? Two. Two. Okay. There's something called an amplitude. The amplitude is half. You guys need to write this down carefully. The amplitude is half the distance. Between the highest and lowest point. Thank you. 
Okay? The amplitude is half of the distance between the highest and the lowest point on this periodic function. So what did we say the total distance was? Two. Half that then is? One. Wait, isn't that section that's And the amplitude is half of that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying this is how you find the amplitude. You measure the highest and the lowest point and you take half of that. Yeah, so here the amplitude. Here the amplitude is equal to one. Yeah. Right. Yes. Why wouldn't you just measure it from zero to the highest point? You could. That's another way of doing it. This is just what most textbooks define it as. It's the half the distance between the highest and the lowest. But uh, there's another idea here called a midline. If I I don't want you to draw this in here, it might mess things up. But if I drew a dotted line, doesn't that essentially cut? the graph in half, yes. distance-wise, vertically. Pretty much. So if, he's, if you went from this midline up to the highest point, what's that distance? One. One. Another way of finding the amplitude. Okay. One more word to define. The frequency is one over whatever the period is. Frequency. frequency is one over the period. Frequency is when things occur, like how often. Who's in a, uh, when would you learn this? Physics class, maybe? Who's in a physics class? Or is Maybe not a physics class, a science class. You guys have looked at uh, sound waves? And lie waves, doesn't look like this. And you talked about the frequency. Okay. What it really means is how many cycles are occurring. That's the frequency is a way of talking about it. Now you guys, those that have studied the sound waves, uh, what happens if the amplitude increases of a sound wave? Frequency decreases. It, it might, it not necessarily could, I suppose, but if the amplitude increases, how does that affect the sound that you're hearing? No, it makes it lower. Because it's longer. It's a higher pitch. It's a higher pitch. Well, okay, let me ask this question. What makes sounds different to us? Is it just the frequency and pitch, or what else could change? The vibration. What about the loudness and softness? Doesn't that... Doesn't that differentiate between sounds? So if you increase the amplitude or decrease the amplitude, that's affecting the loudness of a sound. Okay, adjusting the frequency or the period, that's affecting that's affecting how fast the sound wave is moving. That would affect the tone, right? It makes a higher tone or a lower tone. Isn't that what they taught you? Yes. I hope they taught you that. Okay. So anyway, it's uh, all those things can be modeled by uh, periodic functions, usually sine or cosine, for sound waves in particular. Yeah. So what would cause the amplitude to change or the frequency to change? Let's take a look at this. This next part you don't need to draw. You can. What's that? No. All right, anyway, I've got this graph here. Recognize that? Kind of like the graph we just graph. Okay. What I want you to write in your notes, though, is uh, this right here. Y equals A times sine of B theta. Write that. Y equals A times the sine of B theta. Now, that's what I've got here. I've got an A value. You guys might not be able to see that very well. I've got an A value and a B value, right? Yeah. Looking at the equation you just wrote in your notes, where is A in relation to the equation? Is it in front of the function? Yeah. Okay. Check out what happens to the graph if I mess around with A. Right now, A is 1. Okay. What happens if I make A equal to 2? Or three. 
Or if I change it to full, what's happening to the graph? The amplitude's changing, but is the period still the same? Yes. Period's still the same, the amplitude's changing. Okay? Now look at how the equation changed. What's the value there? It might not be able to say it's a full order. How high and how low is the graph going? Four to negative four. Okay? If the number in front changes, how does that affect the graph? It changes the amplitude. Now what if A is negative? Check it out. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Amplitude is decreasing. Now it's zero. There is no function anymore. Because what's zero times anything? Okay. It's actually just a horizontal line going on the x-axis. But uh, what are we thinking with uh, negative? Isn't it still a periodic graph? How do we describe? I mean, what's different about it? Okay. Instead of starting at 0, 0 and going up to its highest point right away, it started at 0, 0 and went down to its lowest point. That's what happens if A is negative. But the, the key you need to remember about a sine function is it starts at 0, 0. And it either goes up to its highest point if it's positive or it goes down to its lowest point. That's what, that's what happens with A. A affects the amplitude. So you probably guessed it. What is B going to do? Frequency of the period? Okay, let me ask you a question. When I increased A, the amplitude grew. What happens if I increase B? Watch carefully what happens when I change B. I'm going to increase B. You guys watch the graph. What's happening? Oh, and positive makes it smaller, just like inside the parentheses, it's opposite. If I increase B, doesn't the period decrease? But if I decrease B, what's happening to the period? Does that seem backwards? Remember that test we took a few weeks ago? If I ask you to graph the square root of x plus 2 and the plus 2 is inside, does that move it to the left? Yeah. Or if I ask you to graph the square root of x minus 5 and the minus 5 was inside the square, doesn't that move it to the right? Inside the function, it always behaves opposite. That's kind of what we talked about. And that's what's happening here. So what you're going to have to do is, if I give you an equation and not a graph, you're going to have to be able to tell me the amplitude and the period just by looking at the equation. Okay? So let's talk about this. If I gave you an equation, what would immediately tell you what the amplitude is? A. Hey. What would help you find the period? B. So write these down. The amplitude is equal to the absolute value of A. And it has to be inside absolute values because an amplitude is a distance. And sometimes A is negative. And it doesn't make sense to have a negative distance, so you have to have an absolute value. And the reason that period is 2 pi divided by B uh, the absolute value of B, for the same reason sometimes B is negative, but the other reason, um, that graph I all had you drew, or draw, <laughs> what was the period of that graph I had you draw? <laughs> Normally the, the period of sine function is 2 pi, but if you start messing around with B, it changes from 2 pi. That's why it starts at 2 pi and you divide it by B, okay. or the absolute value of B. So let's try this. This should only take you like 10 seconds, but we, we ought to do it anyway. Find the amplitude and the period. Bill, write it down. Three times sine of four theta. Find the amplitude, find the period.
you're not having to graph this. All I want you to do is find the amplitude and the period. Okay, turn to your neighbor. Tell them what you got. They tell you what you got. Or what they got. I hear a lot of conversing. Okay, we'll start with the uh, maybe the easier one. Let's see. Uh, don't look. Let's see. Du -du 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 -du. Amplitude, Europe. Amplitude, yep. Amplitude. Put it up there. Oh. Yeah. You will need that. What do you guys think? Three? Oh! Uh, yeah, the period. Anybody feeling brave? This one was a little trickier. All right. Snailed it. That's from Turbo, by the way. Thank you. Uh, pie halves. What do you guys think? Pie halves. It is the correct answer. Okay, because the formula says 2 pi divided by the value of b. In this case, b is 4. 2 pi over 4 is pi halves. All right? Man, my word. We uh, are out of time. Well, I'm sure you guys can figure out the rest of the homework on your own. At least start the homework. If there's a math Excel homework assignment, start it, do what you can do. We'll finish this up next time.